they bring the, so the band a, in or something. That's fun. Kind of like, uh, that you, do you hear? I hear you, Chad. Hi, yeah. No. I don't hear anything. Hold on. Oh, now Hi, I do. General. I gotcha. <laughs> Is there a Coke Zero out there? And a water, no. please. Yes. Yeah, I hear you, Chad. Oh. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. It is post position draw time for Rich Strike and Eric Reed for the Breeders' Cup Classic. What's the best situation for him from a post position perspective? With his style, I would rather be uh, outside probably and uh, get a clean run at him. But he, he likes to rail too, so inside draw is good. As um, long as we get a inside or outside, I'm happy. But with eight horses, it probably doesn't make a big difference. How's everything gone coming into this week and going into the weekend? It's been great. He's training phenomenal, and um, the weather's going to be good for the race. So, I mean, all these horses are champions, and it's going to be one heck of a horse race. I'm just honored to be part of it. Good luck, Eric. Thank you. That's all right. We're here yeah, now, anyway. <coughs> Is there a Coke Zero here? Do you have drinks here? No. No. Let me, let me see. Thanks. Yes. All right. Eight minutes. Great. Breeders' Cup is almost here, and today we get one...
And today, we get one step closer to racing's biggest weekend. Stay tuned for live reactions as the field...
The Breeders' Cup is almost here. And today, we get one step closer to racing's biggest weekend. Stay tuned for live reactions as the fields and post positions for all 14 races are determined. This is the Root and Riddle Breeders' Cup post position draw. FanDuel TV will bring you out to Keeneland Racecourse, but that is a look at Rupp Arena. And just about, oh, uh, about 25 minutes ago, people started filing into Rupp to a festive atmosphere as we're about to draw 14 post position races in the Breeders' Cup. So much to come over the next couple of hours here and in Kentucky. They support what they love. That was quite a sight as we were driving out here, and they were filing into the arena. Got the uh, U.K. pep band out there. Uh, looking forward to going into Rupp Arena in just a moment. I'm Todd Trupp alongside Christina Blacker and Simon Bray. 14 races, but none bigger than, obviously, the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic, where we had nine pre-entries. Yeah, we've been looking forward to this all week. We've talked quite a bit about Flightline, one of the most exciting horses in the world competing in this Breeders' Cup Classic, and where he's going to draw in relation to life is good. I think we're both of the mindset that it would be better for Fightline to be outside of life is good, as it sounds like they are committed to sending Todd Pletcher's horse to the lead. Yeah, I think that would be the ideal scenario. But on the flip side of that, if he happens to get a post, life is good, drawn to the outside, I think he's qu quick enough to cross and clear at this mile and a quarter distance. So uh, we've been talking about him all week. If you've been living under a rock, you probably haven't heard that he worked well earlier this week, and he worked well last week, the week before, the week before that, the month before that. It's just a constant theme, Todd. Yeah, flight line and doing everything right coming into the race. A perfect career. No one has come close to beating him. In fact, he set a record in his most recent start for victory margin in the TVG Pacific Classic, winning by 19 and a quarter. As mentioned, Life is Good is his main rival in the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic because of the fact that he can get away from flight line early. At least we think he will. He has been very aggressive in the mornings. He's very aggressive in his races. But the thought is he'll get the lead, but will he hold off flight line? Yeah, it's the big question mark. The mile and a quarter has been his undoing before in Dubai, but the excuses there were... Maybe the travel, but more importantly, the deeper surface there. I think it made the mile and a quarter seem like a mile and three-eighths for him along the stretch. It's going to be a lot tighter, a lot uh, shorter stretch here, and I think that will help his early natural speed. Okay, as we mentioned, nine were pre-entered into the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. Here they are outside of the top two. Who has a realistic chance to be competitive here and win the whole thing? Well, I would say based on the way he's training, Hot Rod Charlie has kind of touted himself. A little bit. He's shown to be a cut below these horses in the past, but he has been training very well. And then Taba. Taba is rapidly improving for Bob Baffert. One of the, uh, I just want to say real quick, one of the sure. things about the classic is it's three-year-olds get to meet older horses. And, and for me, Christina mentioned a couple. I think Epicenter would be maybe the possible horse. He's a three-year-old taking on older horses for the first time. I think he's marked and stamped himself as probably the best three-year-old in the country. And that's great where we get to see divisions collide. I think he could be the threat. Neither one of you have mentioned Rich Strike. All he did was win the Kentucky Derby in the hearts of most of the general sporting public. And with his trainer is Scott Hazelton. It is post position draw time for Rich Strike and Eric Reed for the Breeders' Cup Classic. What's the best situation for him from a post position perspective? With his style, I would rather be uh, outside probably and uh, get a clean run at him. But he, he likes the rail too, so inside draw is good. As um, long as we get a inside or outside, I'm happy. But with eight horses, it probably doesn't make a big difference. How's everything gone coming into this week and going into the weekend? It's been great. He's training phenomenal, and um, the weather's going to be good for the race. So, I mean, all these horses are champions, and it's going to be one heck of a horse race. I'm just honored to be part of it. Good luck, Eric. Thank you. Always been very humble throughout uh, an amazing experience back on that first Saturday in May when they shocked the world. But as we talked about on Breakfast at the Breeders' Cup, the general world knows the name Rich Strike a lot more than you know, Flightline. That will change after Saturday if Flightline does what he's supposed to. But Rich Strike has been a wonderful story throughout. He's been a great story, a big price. Uh, I mean, he, you know, he was only half a length in front of Epicenter. Epicenter was probably ultimately the best horse in the Kentucky Derby that day. But with the scenario of the race, the way it shaped up, we got a big price. So um, I, I, think he's, I think he's up against it, Rich Strike. Even though he's beaten Epicenter, I think Epicenter is a better horse. Christina, even if those three-year-olds don't beat Flightline, 
is it a question of where they finish in the race that could yep. determine who gets the Eclipse Award? It absolutely is, especially with regard to Epicenter and Taba. As good as Epicenter has been, he only has one grade one victory on his resume, and that goes a long way with the voters in terms of determining that championship. Taba, on the other hand, has two grade ones already. So depending on where they finish in relation to themselves, even if Flightline wins, if Taba finishes ahead of Epicenter, that could swing some votes in his favor. We saw a similar situation last year, right? Nick's go, older horse, one. We had two three-year-olds run second and third, Medina Spirit and Essential Quality. As Mark Ian, as great as the matchup is with uh, Flightline and Life is Good, you could argue that the Longines Breeders' Cup Distaff has an amazing race as as well with the anticipated matchup against the Barn Buddies. That would be Malathot and Nest, both out of the Todd Pletcher Barn. Then there's Clarier, who had a legitimate excuse last night when she lost to Malathot. Prior to that, both her wins were over Malathot. Then you got the Kentucky Oaks winner in there, Secret Oath for trainer D. Wayne Lucas. Uh, compact field, but again, the quality speaks to the Longines Breeders' Cup distaff. And Nest has really improved the second half of the season of her three-year-old Philly campaign. Deepest distaff field we've seen in years, right? First I and second so. place finishes from the Oaks this year. Last year's Oaks winner all matching up. Nest has been just dazzling, not only in the mornings, but at Saratoga this summer. There were some stellar performances throughout the spa meet, but she definitely stole the show on both occasions in the Grade 1 Alabama, in the Grade 1 Coaching Club American Oaks. She's already proven herself, even against the boys, with that second place effort in the Belmont. Here she is on the outside of this work. We worked in tandem uh, a couple times in company this last couple of weeks, and she's just doing everything right. Distance is no problem for her. In fact, she'd probably prefer it to be even farther, but she was bef definitely more suited in this race than taking on the boys again in the Classic. Then there is Malathot, who was last year's Kentucky Oaks winner and has had a very good four-year-old campaign and has looked just as good in the mornings. Yeah, she, she's a more workman-like type filly. She's, I mean, she wins her races you know, by three, four lengths against the right company, but she's not explosive. She kind of, you have to grind her up and keep her going. And John Velasquez has found the key to her, I think. He really knows her well. Early on, you know, she's winning her races by three parts of a length, getting beat by half a length. She's just a deep closing grinder here. So she's a major, major factor in here. And after all, this is the Breeders' Cup. I think it's astonishing that the top three Phillies mares in this race, you've got Malafat Nest and Clarier. You know what they have in common? Curlin. All by Curlin. I mean, it's that's... Any sire, any farm standing a stallion would appreciate one of those in one year, let alone three in one race, let alone the top three betting choices. Yeah, the two big names on the stallion front in this year's Breeders' Cup, Curlin and Gunrunner. Let's talk about the juvenile, the fan duel juvenile. And in here, Bob Baffert has two of the key horses. And we take a look at Cave Rock as one of the two Baffert entrants. The other is National Treasure. But everything starts through Cave Rock. He's been so impressive in all his races. Christina, you point out there was one workout that you weren't a huge fan of, but all the other ones have looked really good. Yeah, his work three back, he looked like an absolute monster. His work two weeks ago, I thought he just got a little bit lazy in the gallop out. But I think in watching him, it was a little bit more his personality. I noticed, and keep an eye on Juan Ochoa here in the yellow helmet, he was on Cave Rock again this week. This is the most recent work, and he's going to keep after him into this gallop out. He's not going to let him idle at all. Post position wise, Todd, I don't think it's, it really makes much difference for Cave Rock. I think he's a horse that makes his own trip. He's a horse that makes his own luck. He'll have no problem being on the lead. But as I say very often, as fast as Bob Baffert's horses are, they are not ranked. They have no problem rating because they work so much in company and they do so much of that in the morning. Trainer Chad Brown has been touting his hope in the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile presented by Thoroughbred After Care Alliance. Simon, that's Blazing Sevens. Yeah, big question mark for Blazing Sevens is the two turns right here. I mean, looking at the pedigree, looking at the conditions, that one turn mile last time out, um, it's, it's a different scenario. Deep closing, you know, one turn horse or can this horse show the ability to stretch out? Been very, very impressive though winning two out of three stars. A couple of those efforts were on a sloppy racetrack. Who else should we be paying attention to here uh, amongst the pre-entries? I would say Forte uh, from Todd Pletcher's barn, the son of violence. He's three for four lifetime, including a win here at Keeneland in that Breeders' Fraternity. That was over Fall Stars weekend. And I thought what was most impressive about his performance that day was the middle move, then being able to come back and then have another move late 
in the stages of that race. It's a difficult thing to do, and we are at the Breeders' Cup level. We're at the grade one level with all these horses. They should have multiple gears, multiple moves. But keep in mind, he's a young horse, too. So that's a lot to ask of a young horse. He's a true professional. He's the absolute legitimate threat to Cave Rock for a couple of reasons. You mentioned him all at one. I mean, he smashed four um, Blazing Sevens so the one time they met. And what did Blazing Sevens do? He came back and won the Champagne. That enhanced Forte's credentials. Forte went and won the Breeders' Futurity. And it was right here over the racetrack. That's the second thing. He's been camped out here for well over a month. We know he likes the racetrack. Got the right running style. Not one-dimensional. Doesn't need to be up on the lead. If he gets quick up front, which he can do with some of these youngsters coming out of shorter one-turn races, he's going to be the beneficiary. One of the biggest races on a Future Stars Friday. It's the Fan Duel Breeders' Cup Juvenile presented by TAA. There are five championship races on Friday. And then there will be nine championship races on Saturday and news on Saturday in the Breeders' Cup Sprint that came out after we were done with our breakfast at the Breeders' Cup show. Yeah, Jack Christopher won't be entered, uh, so you won't see him in the entries. Or the, well, he was pre-entered, but you won't see him in the entries a little later on here for the uh, Breeders' Cup Sprint. Chad Brown made a decision. He said there's some physical issues. They went back and forth with the vets. Remember, a year ago, he was scratched just a couple of days before the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He was actually entered that day and got scratched with a minor knee injury. I don't think he's an easy horse to train physically. Chad's done all the right things. He set out a release today that he took a serious set of x-rays, sent them to Rude and Riddle. But he thinks just in the best interest, rather than entering and then having a scratch, it's going to affect the post position, negative impact on the Breeders' Cup. He elects not to enter. Been an unlucky horse when it comes to the Breeders' Cup, uh, isn't he, Christina Jack Christopher? Yeah, it's just kind of been bad timing for him in both occasions, hasn't it? But it does sound like Chad Brown is confident in his abilities. We know this horse has a lot of talent. Uh, we know that he's, you know, a grade one type competitor, but going to go ahead and elect to take him out of competition competition before he is scratched we saw him on the show it, he is just a little bit rough moving when he gets going before he kind of gets into a better stride the faster he goes the better he looks but this is the breeders cup and so you know we're gonna have to be very careful and very critical from the vet perspective on all horses competing. yeah i mean look there are certain horses i've been around them real quick that that just don't move like a cadillac and and they, they perform well in the afternoon Unfortunately, in the age we live in now, all the scrutiny, you just have to err on the side of caution. We're getting close to the start of the post-position draw for the Breeders' Cup. A live look in Terup Arena. That is the site of the eight-time national champion UK men's basketball team. By the way, the cheerleading squad, pretty good too. 24-time national championships. We'll be back. Established in 1982, Rood and Riddle Equine Hospital is a worldwide leader in equine health care, providing a full menu of specialties of services and treatment for all breeds and disciplines of horses, from the family companion to the high-performance athlete. Learn more today about Rood and Riddle Equine Hospital. Visit RudenRiddle.com or call 888-773-4838. You called that touchdown. Saw that sack coming. Predicted the pizza tasted better than it looks. And, of course, you knew the game's not over until it's over. So this NFL season, put your skills to the test with FanDuel's free games for a shot at $1 million in prizes. FanDuel. Make every moment more. TVG's free handicapping tools are at your fingertips. Access expert picks, both found on the app and at TVG.com. Find selections in either the promotions header under the More tab or on the race page for select races. And follow your experts to get notified when new picks are available. Then use the bet ticket to play along. Check out TVG's expert picks, both on the app and at TVG.com. This is a Kentucky thoroughbred. This is a Kentucky-built power foil industrial fan. Like a thoroughbred, it too delivers unrivaled performance. And while they both run with purpose and pride, this one runs to keep your workforce feeling cool and comfortable. Power foil, the best-selling big fan in the world. Bigfans.com. Exceptionally engineered. 
It's time to bet the race, and FanDuel Racing has entered the starting gate. Download the FanDuel Racing app, and you're off. It's super easy to use from the start. Make every moment more with tools to help you win on the inside. Watch out for great promos and easy deposits. And here comes fast payouts. It's super easy to use. It's fast payouts. It's super easy. There's no doubt about it. The best place to bet is FanDuel Racing. New customers bet the Breeders' Cup and get up to $100 back if your horse doesn't win. So many of our historic legends, the spirit that prompts the desire for tradition. This is what we see here today in an arena that is no stranger to triumph itself. He's by Davis. This is the pulse we feel, the connection, the chill, the thunder. We stand in the presence of legends and of 14 yet to be immortalized. From the four corners of the globe, they've come to take the world stage at Keeneland. History will record their names. Their journey will uphold tradition. But don't forget this feeling right here, right now. A no doubt champion. It's this feeling, this need, this hope that brings the Breeders' Cup World Championships back year after year. This is why we race. Wow. If that doesn't give you chills and get you excited for this weekend, I'm not sure what will. Good afternoon and welcome to the Rude and Riddle post position draw for the 39th edition of the Breeders' Cup World Championships. I am so honored to be here. Brittany Erton alongside international racing analyst Rishi Persad. You knew this was going to be something special. Flew all the way from England, your very first time to Lexington and Keeneland. What do you make of it? Well, I've heard about Kentucky. I've heard about all that Kentucky offers. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, what I've seen so far in the two days that I've been here has been pretty spectacular, mm -hmm. pretty majestic. I love the race course. And amazingly, everyone's so friendly. Oh, yeah, that, that's Kentucky for you, right? <laughs> uh, we're just getting started. Today, we will draw the 14 championship races, but I think we need to make note of where we are right now. Your first time to Kentucky, our first time having the post position draw held at Rupp Arena, home of the Wildcats. When you think of Kentucky, right? I've got some Wildcats fans, right? When you think of Kentucky, you think of horse racing, and you think of basketball, so it's wonderful to have the two joining today for the post position draw. 177 horses entered from seven different countries. We know how everybody loves a post position draw, right? How wow. long could we make this last? We're going into overtime, right? <laughs> You're using basketball references. You're going to have to. Is that over that the one. head? No idea. Okay. Now we will try and make this as efficient as possible. So let's get underway. We would love to welcome in President and CEO of Keeneland for a few words, Shannon Arvin. Hello, everybody, and happy Breeders' Cup week. It's here. A lot of work has been happening behind the scenes, and on behalf of the Keeneland team, I just want to say how happy we are that this week is here and how proud and excited we are to welcome the Breeders' Cup back to Keeneland for the third time. It's such a privilege for us to host racing participants and fans from across the country and from around the world. Our mission since 1936 has been to perpetuate the best in thoroughbred racing, and the Breeders' Cup World Championships certainly fit well within that mission. 
We love celebrating this international event with the Lexington community, which has shown its enthusiasm for the Breeders' Cup by showcasing our Southern hospitality and once again rolling out the purple carpet to our guests. The thoroughbred industry is so important to our community. That can't be overstated. We are passionate about racing and more than anything, we revere the horse. We all do what we do for the love of the horse. I wanna take this time to also thank everyone in the community for their efforts to make the Breeders' Cup World Championships happen. Drew Fleming and I often joke about his two days of work of the year, but the truth is it takes a lot of work to make the Breeders' Cup World Championships happen. It's been a pleasure as always to work with our friends at the Breeders' Cup, Mayor Gorton, Visit Lex, the University of Kentucky, city officials, and our business partners. The Breeders' Cup experience extends far beyond Keeneland's gates, and these fantastic experiences for our fans and guests could not happen without your support. It's now my pleasure to introduce Breeders' Cup's president and CEO, my good friend, Drew Fleming. Thank you, Shannon. Welcome to the 2022 Root and Riddle post position draw for this year's Breeders' Cup World Championships. There's simply no better feeling than being able to welcome our fans, our guests, and our racing participants to the Breeders' Cup World Championships as we make good on our commitment to return to beautiful Lexington and to the majestic Keeneland race course after running without fans in 2020. Simply put, our fans from around the world are the best and they deserve this. On behalf of our board of directors, our members, and our nominators from all over the world, we are excited and honored to commence Breeders' Cup Week. We're also thrilled to be in the legendary Rupp Arena, home of the Wildcats, and are honored to have the University of Kentucky's very own Coach Cal here with us shortly. We also would like to thank the horse capital of the world for hosting us all week long. We want to thank Keeneland for not only being such a great partner for the World Championships, but also for playing a vital role for the enhancement of racing and the thoroughbred under Shannon Arvin's leadership. For those that are not able to be in Lexington with us, I'm proud to say that the Breeders' Cup will be broadcast in more than 150 countries around the world, led by our domestic partners at NBC Sports and FanDuel TV. I'm also pleased to say that 26 countries will be wagering into the Breeders' Cup Global Pool. The horses that we're selecting for post positions today are the very best from across the globe. This year's field comes from seven countries and four continents and have outperformed the competition in race after race to get where they are today. To all our owners and breeders, congratulations for being here and welcome to the show. Before we get on with today's draw, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Rude and Riddle, for helping us to make this event possible. We really appreciate your support and all you do for the thoroughbred industry. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Steve Reed from Rude and Riddle. Thank you all so much. Good afternoon. I'm uh, proud to be here to represent Rude and Riddle and uh, Proud to be a part uh, of this particular uh, program. Rudin Riddle uh, is a, a hospital that uh, is proud to not only sponsor the post physician draw, but to be the official veterinary hospital and veterinary pharmacy of uh, Breeders' Cup. Uh, Breeders' Cup is, is such an important thing, and to have it in Lexington, as the previous uh, individuals have already stated, is a great honor for the city and for all of us. Uh, with that, I would like to congratulate all of the uh, horses, the trainers, the owners, and all of their connections, uh, including all the way down, uh, especially many of the grooms. I'd like to congratulate them for the opportunity to be here, welcome them, and uh, pray for not only great racing, but safe racing. Thank you.
Well, we can't do this without any officials. So, ladies and gentlemen, why don't we welcome up onto the stage uh, to oversee all the proceedings for the 14 Breeders' Cup Championship races. Please welcome Racing Secretary Ben Huffman and the Keeneland Vice President of Racing, Gatewood Bell. So they'll be officiating over proceedings as we get ready for this year's Rude and Riddle Breeders' Cup post-position draw and the first of our 14 championship races. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, it's the Juvenile Turf Sprint. Future Stars Friday begins with the fifth edition of the $1 million Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint at five and a half furlongs. Trainer Wesley Ward and jockey Irad Ortiz Jr. dominated the last three races with front-running victories by four-wheel drive in 2019 at Santa Anita Park, Golden Pal in 2020 at Keeneland, and last year with Twilight Gleaming, who became the first filly to win the race with her victory at Del Mar. This is the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. And the Juvenile Turf Sprint is worth $1 million. It's run over five and a half furlongs, and we have 12 declared runners plus three also eligibles. Should tell you that Bushido is also eligible 13, None Hudson 14, and Monsieur Coco 15. Gentlemen, take it away. Okay, would put in 12. So the pills are going in. And we are ready to go with our first race. Number nine. Nine, sharp as attack, Tyler Gaffleon. Nine, sharp as attack, Tyler Gaffleon, 15 to one. Number eight. Eight, American Apple, Gerardo Corrales. American Apple with Gerardo Corrales, 20 to one. Number 12. 12, the Platinum Queen, Holly Doyle. The Platinum Queen, big hope for uh, the UK, Holly Doyle on board, 7 to 2. Number 11. 11, Speedboat Beach, Flavian Pratt. 11, Speedboat Beach, Flavian Pratt is 15 to 1. Number 2. Two, Love Reigns, Irad Ortiz. Two, Love Reigns for Wes Ward, who's of course won this race for the last three years. Irad Ortiz Jr., four to one. Number one. One, Lady Hollywood, Umberto Rispoli. And Lady Hollywood in one for Umberto Rispoli, and that's 15 to one. Number four. Four, dramatized Ryan Moore. Dramatized, another European challenger, trained by Carl Berg, Ryan Moore in the saddle, 15 to 1. Number 10. 10, Tyler's Tribe, Kylie Jordan. And 10, Tyler's Tribe with Kylie Jordan is 8 to 1. Number 5. 5, Mischief Magic, William Buick. Five Mischief Magic, representing last year's winning combination of Charlie Appleby and William Buick, eight to one. Number six. Six, Persian Force, Frankie Dettori. Yes, number six, Persian Force, Frankie Dettori. We've lost him to uh, California. He's going to be there looking for a Kentucky Derby ride as well. Uh, and Persian Force is 12 to one. Number three. Three, Private Creed, Joel Rosario. Private Creed, Joel Rosario. And number seven. Number seven is Oxymore, Jose Ortiz. And number seven, Oxymore with Jose Ortiz. Uh, we have a few discrepancies with the odds, so don't take those as gospel, just in case there's anyone out there taking private bets. <laughs> uh, so we will tidy those up for you in just a moment. But that is your field for the Juvenile Turf Sprint. Lady Hollywood in one. Love Reigns representing Wes Ward is in two. Trying to win, as we said, for the fourth year in a row. Uh, of course, uh, last year's uh, very successful Charlie in. Appleby. Uh, he has got uh, a couple of interesting runners as well. So that's your field for the Juvenile Turf Sprint.
I'm much shorter than Rishi. Jockey Joelle Rosario has won three of the last four runnings of the $2 million NetJets Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillings at 1 and 1 16th miles. In 2018, the Dominican native scored a front-running win aboard Jaywalk at Churchill Downs. Two years later at Keeneland, Rosario kicked clear along the rail on Vequist and then made it back-to-back -back wins in this race when he guided the Steve Asmussen-trained Echo Zulu to victory last year at Del Mar by a widening five-and-a-quarter lengths to clinch the champion two-year-old Philly title. This is the NetJets Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. And we have a full field of 14 entered with $2 million on the line for these two-year-old fillies. The Net Jet Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillies, a mile and a sixteenth the distance. Gentlemen, take it away. And 14. Right. Number two. Number two, you're my girl, Johnny Velasquez. Number two, you're my girl for trainer John Terranova. John Velasquez has the mount. Number three. Three, and tell me no lies, Ramon Vasquez. And tell me no lies for trainer Peter Miller, post position number three on a three race winning streak, one of four grade one winners within the field. Four. Four, Sabra Tough, Paco Lopez. Sabra Tough for trainer Dallas Stewart. We know how he likes to pull an upset. Paco Lopez to ride. Five. Five is Wonder Wheel, Tyler Gaffleone. Wonder Wheel for trainer Mark Cassie, winner of the grade one Darley Alcibiades over the Breeders' Cup track. Post position five for Wonder Wheel. Number 10. 10, Chocolate Gelato, Irad Ortiz. Post position 10 for Chocolate Gelato and Todd Pletcher, one of two runners that could give the Hall of Famer his first win in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Number 11. 11, American Rocket, Junior Alvarado. Post position 11 for American Rocket for trainer Bill Mott and Junior Alvarado. Number 6. 6, Alma Rosa, Jamie Rodriguez. Post position six for Alma Rosa. Number 12. 12, shoplifter, Martin Garcia. Shoplifter, post position 12 for trainer Eddie Keneally. 20 to one. Number one. One, Vegas Magic, Jose Ortiz. Vegas Magic draws the rail for trainer Doug O'Neill and Jose Ortiz. Number seven. Seven is Chop Chop, Joel Rosario. Post position seven for Chop Chop, Brad Cox, Joel Rosario. We heard about his dominance in this race. Number nine. Nine, Grand Love, Florent Giroux. Post position number nine for Grand Love and trainer Steve Asmussen. Number 14. 14, Raging Sea, Flavian Pratt. It's the far outside post position, 14 for Raging C, Chad Brown and Flavian Pratt. Number eight. Eight, atomically, Luis Saez. And post position eight, the second of two runners for trainer Todd Pletcher. And 13. 13, leave no trace, Jose Lascano. Leave no trace, post position 13, Jose Lescano, last but surely not least. So that is your full field of 14 two-year-old fillies set to take on the grade one Net Jets Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Yes, we can clap, right? American-based runners have won the last eight editions of the $1 million Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf, highlighted by sparkling performances from Lady Eli in 2014. Rushing Fall in 2017, and Ant Pearl taking the 2020 race at Keeneland. Last year at Del Mar, Pizza Bianca served up a winner for Bobby Flay and gave trainer Christophe Clement his first ever Breeders' Cup victory. This is the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf.
and the juvenile Phillies turf run over one mile worth one million dollars. There are 14 declared plus two also eligibles. Those two are bling, also eligible number 15, and alluring angel, also eligible number 16. So away you go. Okay. Put in 14. Here we go. Again. Ready? Number eight. Eight, Manhattan Jungle, Manny Franco. Eight, Manhattan Jungle for Amy Murphy with her first runner, Manuel Franco riding. Number six. Six, be your best, Jose Ortiz. Six, be your best, Jose Ortiz. Number ten. Ten, meditate, Ryan Moore. Ten, meditate for Ryan Moore, Aidan O'Brien. Rarely, this is one of the races that Aidan O'Brien is yet to win uh, at the Breeders' Cup so far. Number two. Two, Cairo Consort, Johnny Velasquez. Cairo Consort in post position number two under John Velasquez. Thirteen. Thirteen, Kadira, Julian Leperu. Thirteen, Kadira, Julian Leperu. Might try the odds again. According to my list, that's eight to one. Number seven. Seven, Spirit Gal, Ricardo Santana. And Spirit Gal, who is in post, posi post position number seven, 20 to one. Number four. Four is Free Look, Flavian Pratt. Free Look in post position number four is six to one. Number one. One is Comanche Country, Umberto Rispoli. Comanche Country, stall number one, 15 to one under Umberto Rispoli. Number 12. 12, Midnight Mile, Wayne Lorden. Midnight Mile for trainer, British trainer Richard Fahey in stall 12 at 10 to one. Number five. Five, Pleasant Passage, Irad Ortiz. I read Ortiz writing Pleasant Passage from stall number five at 12 to one. 14. 14, Basil Martini, John Velasquez. Basil or Basil, as we might say in the UK. Uh, for Joseph O'Brien, of course, has the rare distinction of having ridden and trained a Breeders' Cup winner uh, in stall 14. Number 11. 11, G. Laurie, William Buick. G. Laurie in stall 11 for William Buick at 12 to 1. Number 9. 9, Delight, Louis Saez. 9 for Delight, Louis Saez, one of the fancied runners at 6 to 1. Hopefully a 3. 3 is last call, Frankie Dettori. Last but not least, last call in stall 3 for Frankie Dettori, one of the outsiders at 20 to 1. And that is your field for this year's juvenile Phillies turf worth $1 million. Exactly. Race. Yeah. Over the course of 38 years, an honor roll of champions has won the $2 million FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile, presented by Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance. Starting with Chiefs Crown, who won the very first Breeders' Cup race in 1984 at Hollywood Park, to Arazi's jaw-dropping victory in 1991 at Churchill Downs, and 1997 winner, Favorite Trick, who turned his juvenile triumph into a Horse of the Year title. Both Street Sense in 2008 and Nyquist in 2015 went on to win the Kentucky Derby the following year. And in 2020 at Keeneland, Essential Quality under Luis Saez passed Hot Rod Charlie in deep stretch to claim his title. This is the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile. We've seen some exciting performances by these youngsters over the years, and this could give us an early look at our Kentucky Derby favorite. It is the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile, presented by Thoroughbred Aftercare Alliance. $2 million up for grabs for these two-year-old males. A mile and a sixteenth the distance. Ten have been entered. Okay, put in ten. Number seven. Seven, wound up, Mario Gutierrez. Wound up, Mario Gutierrez for trainer Michael McCarthy. 
30 to 1 on wound up. Number three. Three, Cave Rock, Juan Hernandez. Your four to five morning line favorite, Cave Rock, undefeated son of the late Breeders' Cup Classic winner, Arrowgate, post position three. Number eight. Eight, Lost Ark, Luis Saez. Post position eight is Lost Ark, the half-brother to top distaff contender, Nest, 20 to one. Number two. Two is congruent, Jose Ortiz. Inside post for congruent, Jose Ortiz, Antonio Sano teaming up here, 30 to one. Number 10. 10, National Treasure, John Velasquez. Outside post position for National Treasure, John Velasquez, Bob Baffert, eight to one on the morning line. Number five. Five, verifying, Joel Rosario. Post position five right in the middle of the field for Brad Cox and Joel Rosario. Brad Cox took the juvenile last time out, as we saw earlier. Last time it was held at Keeneland, I should say, with essential quality, 10 to one. Number six. Six is Blazing Sevens, Flavian Pratt. Blazing Sevens, Chad Brown won this race in 2017 with good magic, six to one. Number nine. Nine, Curly Jack, Edgar Morales. Post position nine for Curly Jack, Tom Amos. This will give Puerto Rican jockey his first mount in the Breeders' Cup. That is Edgar Morales, 20 to one. Number four. Four, Forte, Irad Ortiz. Forte for Pletcher and Ortiz from the same team that brought you 2010 juvenile winner Uncle Mo, Pletcher and Rapoli Stable, four to one. And number one. Number one, Hurricane J, Joe Talamo. Rail draw for Hurricane J, Paolo Lobo sending out this trainee, 30 to one. So that is a look at your field for the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Juvenile presented by the TAA. Cave Rock, your four to five favorite, post position three. Trainer Charlie Appleby has saddled three Godolphin winners of the one mile, one million dollar Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. First with Outstrip in 2013 at Santa Anita. Then with Irish Bread Line of Duty at Churchill Downs. And last year with Modern Games at Del Mar, who surged clear in the stretch for a one and a half length victory under William Buick. But the year prior at Keeneland, it was Kentucky Bread Fire at Will, who ignited a furious rally and scored a three length victory under Ricardo Santana Jr. And for trainer Mike Maker, this is the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Yes, the British Cup Juvenile Turf worth $1 million for the Colts and Geldings over one mile. And we have a field of 14. 14. So, Ben Gatewood, okay. away you go. Rock and roll. Here we go. Number seven. Seven, really good, Luis Saez. Seven, really good for trainer Michael Maker and Louis Sayers. Number nine. Nine, Nagarok, Manny Franco. Nine, Nagarok, trained by Graham Motion, Manny Franco in the saddle. Number 12. 12, Mo Stash, Rafael Bejarano. 12, Mo Stash for trainer Vicky Oliver and Rafael Bejarano in most stash in stool number 12. 14. 14, Gaslight Dancer, Juan Hernandez. 14, Gaslight Dancer, another for Michael Maker, Juan Hernandez. 13. 13, Major Dude, Irad Ortiz. Todd Pletcher's Major Dude in stool 13 with Irad Ortiz. Number two. Two, packs of wallop, Mike Smith. Two, packs of wallop for trainer Jeff Mullins under Mike Smith. Number 11. 11, Reckoning Force, Tyler Gaffalion. Brendan Walsh's Reckoning Force in stall 11. Number one. One, Victoria Road, Ryan Moore. Aiden O'Brien's Victoria Road in stall one under Ryan Moore. Number four. 
for Silver Knot, William Buick. Silver Knot, your favorite for last year's winning combination, Charlie Appleby and William Buick. Number six. Six, and the winner is Joel Rosario. And the winner is in six for Joel Rosario and trainer Wayne Catalano. Number three. Three, Curly, Larry, and Moe, Francisco Arietta. And who doesn't love that name? Three, Curly, Larry, and Moe. Number 10. 10, web slinger, Dylan Davis. Mark Cassie's web slinger in stall number 10. Five. Five, Battle of Normandy, Jose Lascano. Jose Loscano will ride Battle of Normandy from stall number five. And eight. Eight, I'm very busy, Flavian Pratt. Chad Brown's I'm very busy in stall number eight uh, under Flavian Pratt. That's your field for this year's Juvenile Turf. Silver not the favorite for Charlie Appleby and William Buick. And indeed, that is the lineup for Future Stars Friday. We have five wonderful races in prospect but we're going to take a break now and when we come back we'll be lining up the championship races on saturday we'll see you in a couple of minutes All right. break. Touchdown. Saw that sack coming. Predicted the pizza tasted better than it looks. And of course, you knew the game's not over until it's over. So this NFL season, put your skills to the test with FanDuel's free games for a shot at $1 million in prizes. FanDuel, make every moment more. Hey, big man. Oh, hey, Dave told me you got some kind of great system for betting that really works. That's true. What is it? Is it like uh, home dogs? No, 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 no. It's bird mascots. No, I, uh, I just use FanDuel's responsible gaming tools like time and spending limits to manage my play. That's the system. Hasn't failed me yet. Cool, cool, cool. You know what, man? I'm just going to keep this between you and me. It's not a secret, Bob. Every better has a system. Make FanDuel's responsible gaming tools a key part of yours. It's more fun that way. Established in 1982... Rood and Riddle Equine Hospital is a worldwide leader in equine health care, providing a full menu of specialties of services and treatment for all breeds and disciplines of horses, from the family companion to the high-performance athlete. Learn more today about Rood and Riddle Equine Hospital. Visit RudenRiddle.com or call 888-773-4838. Dreamstorm to win the Rico Woodbine Mile. To... She's going to do it. Simple verse has won the ledger. Slate next beer and she Murphy get through and have won. It's getting really tight. The star of the season. Drawing line. The purple cap. Kamiko the far side of him. Kamiko's won. The other midline. Mongerstein has just won it with Mossey. Ocean Road after going to Vegas. Ocean Road. And welcome back to the Root and Riddle post position draw for the 39th Breeders' Cup World Championship. A very special welcome to those of you watching from home, either on FanDuel TV or the Breeders' Cup social website. How's everybody doing? We know everybody loves a post position ride, yes? Okay? We're rolling yeah. through these, right? Team yeah. Flight Line happy over here? <laughs> yeah? Mike's okay. on. <laughs> Breeders' Cup Saturday, nine championship races. Race number three will begin with the Philly and Mare Sprint. Favorites have won two of the last three runnings of the $1 million Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint, contested at seven furlongs. 
Covefi held on to defeat Bellafina at Santa Anita in 2019 for trainer Steve Asmussen. And Gamine was a six-length winner under John Velasquez at Keeneland in 2020. But in her bid to defend her title last year at Del Mar, Gamine, at odds of two to five, was defeated by the Michael McCarthy-trained CC, who scored a two-and-a-half-length victory under Victor Espinoza. No horse has repeated as the champion of this race since Groupie Doll won back-to-back editions in 2012 and 2013. This is the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. First championship race on Saturday goes as race number three, the Philly and Mare Sprint. One million dollars on the line for these Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and upward going that unique, quirky seven for long distance. Thirteen have been entered. And I also wanted to give a, a shout out to Morning Line Odds Maker at Keeneland, Nick Tamaro, for helping us out. And we apologize for, you know, the stickiness earlier. So big shout out to him and hopefully we're good to go. Okay, here we go. Number nine. Nine, Sterling Silver, Javier Castellano. Post position nine is Sterling Silver. 30 to one on the morning line for Tom Albertrani. Number six. Six, Chain of Love, William Buick. Chain of Love. It was a breakout year for Japan last year with two Breeders' Cup wins. This is their sole representative, Chain of Love, 20 to one. Number seven. Seven, obligatory, Jose Ortiz. It's post position seven for obligatory. Earned her grade one on Derby Day this year, and her trainer was quoted after, I was impressed, and I'm very seldom impressed. That's Hall of Famer Bill Mott, eight to one. Number two. Two, Edgeway, Juan Hernandez. From the team that brings you Flightline, John Sadler, 15 to one on Edgeway. Juan Hernandez to ride. Number 10. 10, Hot Peppers, Junior Alvarado. Hot Peppers, she's appropriately named. She is fast for Rudy Rodriguez. 30 to 1 on the morning line. Number 5. 5, Frank's Roquette, Luis Saez. Post position 5 for Ra Frank's Roquette, another for Bill Mott. 6 to 1. 12. 12. Lady Rocket, Joel Rosario. Lady Rocket for Brad Cox and Joel Rosario, another owned in part by Frank Fletcher, 10 to 1. Number 8. 8. Good Night Olive, Irad Ortiz. Post position 8 for Good Night Olive. This is your morning line favorite for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint at 3-1. to one. She is coming in off of a five-race win streak, combined winning margin of 29 lengths. Number 3. 3. Chi-Town Lady, Flavian Pratt. Chi-Town Lady, post position 3 for Wesley Ward. She was a 17-1 to one upset winner of the Test Stakes. Chi-Town Lady is 20-1. to one. 13. 13, Echo Zulu, Ricardo Santana. Outside post for Echo Zulu, last year's two-year-old champion and Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies winner for Steve Asmussen, 6-1. to one. Number 11. 11, Wicked Halo, Tyler Gaffleone. Wicked Halo, another for trainer Steve Asmussen, Tyler Gaffleone to ride, 10-1 to one on Wicked Halo, post position 11. Number four. Four, CC Victor Espinoza. Your defending champion, CC. you heard it earlier. She could join Groupie Doll as just the second two-time winner of this race. Michael McCarthy sending out the defending champ, four to one. And one. Slammed, Florent Giroux. And post position one for slammed for trainer Todd Fincher. This is the second New Mexico bred to compete in the Breeders' Cup, and she was supplemented for $200,000 into this race. 15 to 1. So a big, exciting, competitive field we have set for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint that will kick off the championship races on Saturday. Let's keep it rolling. 
the combination of a quick break and firm positioning are part of the winning formula in the $1 million Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint at five and one-half furlongs. California-based runners won four consecutive turf sprints from 2016 through 2019, punctuated by consecutive victories from Stormy Liberal at Del Mar and at Churchill Downs. In 2020 at Keeneland, British bred filly Glass Slippers became the first European horse to win the turf sprint. In 2021 at Del Mar, the Wesley Ward-trained Golden Pal won his second Breeders' Cup race after taking the juvenile turf sprint at Keeneland the year before. This is the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. Yes, indeed. Many eyes on Golden Pal as he tries to win for the third successive year at the Breeders' Cup. Uh, of course, he's pretty impressive uh, on his own turf, and he was 12 months ago in Del Mar. The Breeders' Cup turf sprint worth $1 million, five and a half furlongs. We have a field of 14, and there are two also eligibles. Uh, they are Dancing Buck, who's also eligible number 15, and also eligible number 16 is Oceanic. So, 14 to pick out of the hat. Okay, here we go. Number 12. 12, Bran Vincent Chaminade. 12, Bran for the flight line uh, trainer, John Sadler, Vincent Chemino on board. Number two. Two, Flotus, Holly Doyle. Two, Flotus for Simon and Ed Crisford, who of course have an important runner in the Melbourne Cup a little bit later on uh, today. And Flotus is currently 30 to 1 on the morning line. Number nine. Nine, Naval Crown. James Doyle. Nine is Naval Crown for Charlie Appleby and James Doyle. Naval Crown, one of two runners in the race for Charlie Appleby. And Naval Crown is 30 to 1. Number four. Four, Campanelli. Frankie DeTore. Former Royal Ascot winner Campanelli. Uh, one for trainer Wes Ward in this race. And Frankie DeTore teaming up with his old pal. Campanelli, 8 to 1 in four. Number seven. Seven, Arrest Me Red, Johnny Velasquez. Seven is Arrest Me Wed. Another for Wes Ward, John Velasquez, and uh, morning line odds of 15 to 1. 14. 14, Artemis City Limits, Juan Hernandez. Michael Makers, Artemis City Limits, and Juan Hernandez, 30 to 1 in 14. Number six. Six. Highfield Princess, Jason Hart. Highfield Princess, who's won Group 1 races in France, England, and Ireland. Uh, for John Quinn and Jason Hart, she is 72, stall number six. Number one. One. Creative Force, William Buick. Creative Force, another for Charlie Appleby, who's also got Naval Crown. William Buick is riding Creative Force, and he is in stall one. Morning line odds of 10 to 1. Number five. Five, Go Bears Go, Umberto Spoli. Go Bears Go was here last year, or here at the Breeders' Cup in Del Mar. Uh, for trainer David Lochnane, Umberto Spoli riding at 30 to 1 in post position number five. Number 10. 10, Caravel, Tyler Gaffleon. 10, Caravel, who won last time. For Brad Cox, Tyler Gaffleon on board, 20 to 1 in stall number 10. Number 11. 11, Casa Creed, Luis Saez. 11 for Bill Mott's Casa Creed and Luis Saez, and Casa Creed is available at 6 to 1. Number 3. 3, Emirati Anna. Ryan Moore. Emirati Anna, top class last season, and we'll be able to rediscover his best form for Kevin Ryan and Ryan Moore. He is 20 to 1 in stall three. 13. 13, Casadero, Flavian Pratt. 13, Casadero for Brendan Walsh and Flavian Pratt. 20 to 1, stall 13. 8. 8, Golden Powell, 
Irad Ortiz. The defending champ, golden pal for Wes Ward and Irad Ortiz, your two to one morning line favorite. Stall eight for golden pal, and that is the lineup. Golden pal, of course, bidding to win for the third successive year at the Breeders' Cup. Your lineup for the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. Front runners have won the last four editions of the $1 million Big Ass Fans Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. In 2018 at Churchill Downs, City of Light was lightning quick under Javier Castellano. At Santa Anita in 2019, Spun to Run was unchallenged throughout under Irad Ortiz Jr. In 2020 at Keeneland, Nick's go just kept going to a three and one half length victory. Last year, Ortiz was back on the winner again. This time aboard three-year-old Life is Good, who was rather great at Del Mar, drawing off by nearly six lengths at the wire. This is the Big Ass Fans Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. One million dollars for these three-year-olds and upward, obviously going one mile in the Big Ass Fans Dirt Mile. Eleven have been entered. Okay, here we go. Number nine. Nine, Cyberknife, Florent Giroux. Post position nine for Cyberknife for trainer Brad Cox. He said on choosing the dirt mile over the classic, there's no flight line. Nine to two. Number 10. 10, Senor Buscador, Francisco Arietta. Senor Buscador, post position 10 for trainer Todd Fincher and Francisco Arietta. It is the first Breeders' Cup mount for Arietta. 12 to one. Number seven. Seven, Cody's Wish, Junior Alvarado. Post position seven for Cody's Wish, which is undoubtedly one of the most heartwarming stories at this year's Breeders' Cup, brings together 16-year-old Cody Dorman, who I'm told is here today, and his namesake, who created a very special bond when they first met when Cody's Wish was a foal. So a very easy story to root for. Also your morning line favorite, five to two on Cody's Wish. Number four. Four, Law Professor Jose Ortiz. Post position four for Law Professor Jose Ortiz. He gave the classic contender Life is Good a good run for his money, finishing second last out in the grade one Woodward, 20 to one. Eight. Eight, informative, Abner Adorno. Post position eight for informative for trainer Uriah St. Louis. He knows something about pulling an upset, as does this horse. Informative one at 79 to one. His morning line, 30 to one. Number two. Two, simplification, Louis Saez. Post position two for simplification and trainer Antonio Sana was on the Derby Trail earlier this year, 15 to one. Number one. One, slow down, Andy. Mario Gutierrez. There was an emphasis in the way that you said slow down, Andy. Slow down, Andy gets the rail at 30 to 1 for Doug O'Neill and Mario Gutierrez. Number three. Three, pipeline, Flavian Pratt. Pipeline draws post position three for Chad Brown. Flavian Pratt opted for the dirt mile over the sprint, 8 to 1. Five. Five, Gunite, Tyler Gaffelion. Gunite, very impressive. We'll be wheeling back in two weeks off of that nice victory for Steve Absmussen right over that Keeneland track. Seven to two. Six. Six, Laurel River, Irad Ortiz. Laurel River for Bob Baffert, Irad Ortiz, and Baffert seeking a first win in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Nine to two. And 11. 11 is three technique, Rafael Bayarano. Three Technique gave trainer Jason Cook his first stakes win in 25 years and now his first Breeders' Cup starter. Three Technique, 30 to 1 on the morning line. So that is your field for race number five on Breeders' Cup Saturday. The big ass fans, Dirt Mile, 11 entered. Your morning line favorite, Cody's Wish, at 5 to 2. Horses bred on foreign soil have won the $2 million Maker's Mark Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf a remarkable 16 times, including the last six editions. British breds Queen's Trust and Wahida won it in 2016 and 2017, respectively. Irish breds Sister Charlie and Iridessa were the next two winners. 
In 2020 at Keeneland, 17 to one shot Adaria, bred in France, prevailed over rushing fall by a neck. And history was made last year when Love's Only You split horses in deep stretch and became the first ever Japanese-based horse to win a Breeders' Cup World Championships race. This is the Maker's Mark Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Yes, the Maker's Mark Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf, a grade one race worth $2 million a mile and 3 16th. There are 12 horses lining up for this, five European contenders, uh, and a quality field as well. Uh, gentlemen, away you go. Okay. 12. Here we go. Number two. Two, going to Vegas, Umberto Raspoli. Two, going to Vegas, 20 to 1 morning line odds for Philip D'Amato and Umberto Rispoli. Number eight. Eight, family way, Tyler Gaffalion. Eight, another of the 20 to 1 morning line odds, family way for Brendan Walsh and Tyler Gaffalion. Twelve. Twelve, Moira, Frankie Dettori. 12 Boimer for trainer Kevin Attard. Frankie Dettori riding. Morning line odds of 10 to 1. Number 10. 10 Virginia Joy. Irad Ortiz. For the very successful trainer Chad Brown. Virginia Joy. Irad Ortiz Jr. Morning line odds of 10 to 1. And a reminder that Virginia Joy is in stall position number 10. Five. Five. Tuesday, Ryan Moore. Winner of the Oaks at Epsom back in June for Aidan O'Brien. Tuesday with Ryan Moore in the saddle. Drawn in post position number five, and she is eight to one. Four. Four. Above the curve, Johnny Velasquez. Four is above the curve for trainer Joseph O'Brien, who has won this race before. Johnny Velasquez has taken the ride on above the curve, who is nine to two. Number three. Three, Nashua, Holly Doyle. One of the best European hopes you would think on Saturday is Nashua. Uh, one of the national stakes at Goodwood earlier in the season, placed behind Tuesday in the Oaks at Epsom. Nashua for John Goldston, Holly Doyle, the five to two morning line favorite in stall number three. Seven. Seven, Toy, Wayne Lorden. Another of the Aidan O'Brien contenders, he also got Tuesday. Toy, though, is installed number seven with Wayne Lorden. Morning line odds of 20 to 1. Number six. Six. Mise en scene. Kieran six. Fallon. Mise en scene for James Ferguson. Kieran Fallon, one of the outsiders at 30 to 1. James Ferguson, uh, like the Christophers earlier, with a runner and the favourite in the Melbourne Cup uh, in a few hours' time. So, what a double that would be to win that race and the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Number nine. Nine, Rougier, Flavian Pratt. Nine, Rougier for Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt at 12 to 1. Reminder Rougier is in stall number nine. 11. 11. In Italian, Joel Rosario. Several companion of Rougier and Virginia Joy. In Italian, in stall at number 11 for Joel Rosario, 7 to 2. And 1. 1. Lady Spitesphere, Luis Saez. And Lady Spitesphere completes the field in stall number 1 for Roger Atfield and Luis Saez at 20 to 1. As I said earlier, I think the Europeans feel they've got a strong hand here, but I'm sure the locals will try and battle back. The Europeans led, no doubt, by Nashua for John Gosden and Holly Doyle, the morning line favorite at five to two. That, ladies and gentlemen, is your field for the Maker's Mark Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Dominant winners ruled the $2 million Qatar Racing Breeders' Cup Sprint from 2018 through 2020 with dynamic performances by two-time winner Roy H. at Churchill Downs and Matoli the following year at Santa Anita. The venerable Whitmore, who won the sprint by more than three lengths at Keeneland in 2020 in his fourth attempt. But last year at Del Mar, the Wayne Catalano-trained Aloha West provided a thriller closing curiously to win by a nose. This is the Qatar Racing Breeders' Cup Sprint. 
and Furious. That is the name of the game in the Qatar Racing Breeders' Cup Sprint Race number seven on Championship Saturday. Two million dollars up for grabs for these three-year-olds and upward. Six furlongs or three quarters of a mile of the distance. Eleven entered, including the defending champion. Okay, put in eleven. Here we go. Number six. Six, Elite Power, Irad Ortiz. Post position six for Elite Power, Bill Mott sending out the Vosberg winner. Six to one on the morning line. Number 10, 10, Willie Boy, Chantal Sutherland. Post position 10 is Willie Boy for trainer Jorge Delgado. The 32-year-old Venezuelan-born trainer says of his first Breeders' Cup, he's just trying to drink it all in. 30 to 1. Number 2. 2, Kamari, Jose Ortiz. The female taking on the boys, Kamari for Wesley, Board. Wesley Ward, tried to take on these males here rather than opting in the Philly and Mare Sprint. Loves the six for a long distance for her, four to one. Number one. One, Manny Wah, Corey Lannery. Manny Wah for defending champion trainer Wayne Catalano, one of two horses in the field for him, and he could become just the fourth trainer to win the sprint in back-to-back -back years. 30 to 1. 8. 8 is CZ Rocket, Flavian Pratt. Post position 8 for CZ Rocket for trainer Peter Miller. This will be CZ Rocket's third straight appearance in this race. 20 to 1. Number four. Four, American Theorem. Post position four for American Theorem, George Papabadromo and Joe Bravo. It gave Papabadromo his first grade one win earlier this year in the Bing Crosby. Ten to one on American Theorem. Number seven. Seven, Super Ocho, Hector Berrios. Super Ocho in post position seven, Amador Sanchez sending out this runner, 30 to one. Number five. Five, Aloha West, Luis Saez. So your defending champion, Aloha West, really put on a thriller last time at Del Mar. Draws post position five for Wayne Catalano, 12 to one on the morning line. Number nine. Nine, Jackie's Warrior, Joel Rosario. Jackie's Warrior, your morning line favorite at four to five, is hoping third time's a charm in terms of Breeders' Cup races. Arguably one of America's top sprinters for trainer Steve Asmussen, four to five. Number three. Three, Obesos, Tyler Gaffalione. Oh, Bezos for trainer Greg Foley, Tyler Gaffalione teaming up here, 20 to one on Obesos post position three. And 11. 11. Flash of Mischief, Christian Torres. Flash of Mischief, post position 11 at 30 to 1 for Carl Broberg and Christian Torres. So, a field of 11 entered for the Qatar Racing Breeders' Cup Sprint. Your defending champion, Aloha West, draws post position 5. And the Speedy Jackies Warrior, post position 9, 4 to 5, morning line favorite. The $2 million FanDuel Breeders' Cup Mile, presented by Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund, has had its share of major stars over the years, like the Philly Miesque, who became the first horse to win back-to-back -back Breeders' Cup races with victories in 1987 and 1988, only to be outdone some 20 years later by another female sensation, Goldikova who became the only horse to win three consecutive Breeders' Cup races with mile wins from 2008 through 2010. And tough as they came, Wise Dan, whose victories in 2012 and 2013 twice earned him Horse of the Year titles. This is the FanDuel Breeders' Cup Mile, presented by PDJF. 
Yes, the FanDuel Breeders' Cup mile presented by PDJF is worth $2 million and over the years has provided some remarkable races, particularly successful for the Europeans. There are six European horses lining up in the race this year, a field of 14 plus two also eligibles. Uh, el also eligible number 15 is Front Run the Fed and also eligible number 16 is Gear Jockey. I shall leave it to Gatewood and Ben okay. to come up with a draw. Here we go. Number nine. Nine, Malavath, Tyler Gaffalion. Nine, Malavath, who was here for the Breeders' Cup in Del Mar, Francis Henri Graffard. Uh, back again, this time with a Tyler Gaffalioni at 15 to 1 in stall number nine. Four. Four, Modern Games, William Buick. Four modern games for Charlie Appleby and William Buick. We all know about the drama of his Breeders' Cup juvenile turf win uh, last year. He is 72, and of course, Charlie Appleby and William Buick won this race 12 months ago with Space Blues. Number seven. Seven, Beyond Brilliant, Victor Espinosa. Seven, Beyond Brilliant for John Sheriffs and Victor Espinosa. Morning light odds of 20 to 1. Number 12. 12, King Cause, Juan Hernandez. 12, King Cause, one of the outsiders on the morning lines at 30 to 1 for Michael Maker and Juan Hernandez. 10. 10, Order of Australia, Ryan Moore. Order of Australia, former winner of this race back in 2020 for Aidan O'Brien, Ryan Moore in the saddle at 12 to 1 on the morning line odds in stall number 10. Six. Six, Ivar, Javier Castellano. Ivar, currently 15 to one on the morning line odds. Stall number six for Paolo Lobos. Uh, runner with Javier Castellano in the saddle. 14. 14, domestic spending, Flavian Pratt. One of the Chad Brown runners in the race, domestic spending for Flavian Pratt. Uh, morning line odds of eight to one. Uh, tough draw in stall 14. 11. 11, Annapolis, Irad Ortiz. Todd Pletcher's Annapolis in stall number 11 under Irad Ortiz at 10 to 1. Number 8. 8, Regal Glory, Jose Ortiz. Another of the Chad Brown runners, Regal Glory with Jose Ortiz. Six to one on the morning night odds, stall number eight. Three. Three, Dream, Dream Loper, Kieran Schumark. Kieran Schumark having his first Breeders' Cup ride, Dream Loper for trainer Ed Walker. Morning night odds of six to one. Number one. One, Pogo, James Doyle. Pogo for trainer Charlie Hills, James Doyle, one of the outsiders at 20 to 1. 13. 13, Ken Ross, Frankie Dettori. On the outside, Ken Ross for Rafe Beckett, Frankie Dettori, 9 to 2. Ken Ross, who won on Arc Weekend and, of course, on Champions Day, trying to win a third big race in the space of 30 odd days. Number two. Two, Sheryl's Spite, Louis Saez. One of the outsiders at 30 to 1 on the morning line odds, Sheryl's Spite uh, for Roger Atfield and Louis Saez. And a five. Five, smooth like straight, Johnny and Velasquez. Finally in stall number five, smooth like straight for Michael McCarthy and John Velasquez currently around 10 to 1 on the morning line odds. That is your field for the Fan Jewel Breeders' Cup mile presented by PD JF. 14 runners, six Europeans, former champion in Order of Australia in there as well. Unforgettable performances by the sport's finest fillies and mares have enriched the history of the $2 million Longines Breeders' Cup distaff. In 1988, Personal Ensign caught winning colors at the wire to complete her career undefeated in 13 starts. The holder won two distaffs in non-consecutive years, scoring in 2013 and 2016. 
Returning from the sidelines in 2020, Monomoy Girl won her second Distaff Triumph, prevailing at Keeneland just like she did at Churchill Downs in 2018. And last year at Del Mar, Marsh Lorraine, at odds of 49 to 1, came from the land of the rising sun and nosed out Dunbar Road on the wire and gave Japan its second Breeders' Cup victory. This is the Longines Breeders' Cup Distaff. And there's no doubt about it with this field that we have compiled that it is going to be a race to remember. A mile and an eighth the distance with eight entered. Two million dollars on the line for these fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward. It's the Longines Breeders' Cup Distap. Gentlemen. Okay. Here we go with eight. Number one. One. Malafat, Johnny Velasquez. Getting the rail out of the way quickly. Malathot for trainer Todd Pletcher, John Velasquez, your 2021 Kentucky Oaks winner, was third in the distaff last year. She is undefeated at Keeneland, three to one. Number two. Two, Blue Stripe, Hector Barrios. Post position two for Blue Stripe for Marcelo Polanco and Hector Barrios. It's the half sister to 2019 Breeders' Cup distaff winner, Blue Prize. 20 to 1. 3. 3. Secret Oath, Louis Saez. Your Kentucky Oaks winner, Secret Oath, draws post position 3 for the coach, D. Wayne Lucas. He is the winningest trainer in Breeders' Cup history and looks to add to the tally of 20. 15 to 1. Number 7. 7. Search results, Flavian Pratt. Post position seven for search results. Chad Brown, Flavie and Pratt team up here. They team up quite a bit over Breeders' Cup weekend. A $1.4 million earner. She is nine to two. Number six. Six is Nest, Irad Ortiz. Post position six for your morning line favorite, Nest, nine to five on this three-year-old who's looking to upset her stablemate amongst others. Three-time grade one winner, including second in the Belmont Stakes against the boys. Again, your nine to five morning line favorite, Nest. Five. Five, awake at midnight, Mario Gutierrez. Awake at Midnight draws post position five. O'Neill Gutierrez, the duo, duo that brought you Kentucky Derby winners Nyquist and I'll have another. Look to pull the upset at 30 to 1. Number eight. Eight, Society, Florent Giroux. Society for Steve Asmussen and Florent Giroux. Incredibly talented runner. She is six to one on the morning line. Post position eight for Society. And a four. Four is Clarier, Joel Rosario. Clarier draws post position four. It's a homebred for Barbara Banky Stone Street Stable and one of three entrants sired by two time horse of the year, Curlin. Four to one on Clarier. So that is your field. I said it already, but what a matchup we have of these eight in the Longines Breeders Cup distaff, a mile and an eighth, two million dollars, and hopefully adding to history there. The $4 million Longines Breeders' Cup Turf. In 2015 at Keeneland, the Aiden O'Brien train found upset Arc de Triomphe winner Golden Horn, trained by John Gosden. But Gosden returned in 2018 with his own Arc winner in Judmont's Enable, and the British bred Supermare prevailed in an epic battle with the O'Brien trained Magical and became the first horse to pull off the Arc Breeders' Cup Turf double in the same year. At Keeneland in 2020, Tarnawa overtook Magical and gave trainer Dermot Weld his first Breeders' Cup win. Last year at Del Mar, Yabir circled the field and caught the O'Brien-trained broom for Godolphin and trainer Charlie Appleby. This is the Longines Breeders' Cup turf. It's the Longines Breeders' Cup turf worth $4 million run over a mile and a half on the turf. Again, it's been very successful for the uh, Europeans. Charlie Appleby won it last year with Yabir. No Yabir this time around, but he's got two very good contenders in Rebels Romance and Nation's Pride. We have a field of 13 lining up for this year's Longines Breeders' Cup turf. Uh, ben Gatewood, take it away. Here we go. 13. Number seven. 
Seven Nations Pride, William Buick. Seven Nations Pride has also been successful here this season in North America. For Charlie Appleby, William Buick, four to one. Eleven. Eleven. Mishriff, Frankie Dettori. Mishriff, who's been a wonderful international campaigner for Connections, due to have his final race on Saturday in the Longines Breeders' Cup turf. Frankie Dettori is back in the saddle on Mishriff for John Gosden, and he is six to one. Number two. Two, warlike goddess, Joel Rosario. Warlike goddess for trainer Bill Mott is installed to Joel Rosario board, and warlike goddess is nine to two. Three. Three, Stone Age, Ryan Moore. Three Stone Age has run in just about every big race in Europe this year. Stone Age representing Aid De Bruyne, who has won this race six times before. Ryan Moore in the saddle, 15 to 1. Five. Five Rebels Romance, James Doyle. Five Rebels Romance, winner of the UAE Derby as a three-year-old in Dubai, and a winner of two Group 1s in Germany this season for Charlie Appleby and James Doyle, a three-to-one morning line favorite. Number four. Four is Broom, Irad Ortiz. Broom ran a great race in defeat in this race 12 months ago behind Yabir for six-time winner of the Longines Breeders' Cup turf trainer Aidan O'Brien. I read Ortiz on board, 15 to 1 on Broom. Number nine. Nine, Gold Phoenix, Flavian Pratt. Nine is Gold Phoenix, one of the outsiders at 20 to 1 on the morning line odds for Philip D'Amato and Flavian Pratt. One. One, bye bye Melvin, Fergal Lynch. Bye bye Melvin for Fergal Lynch and Graham Motion, a past winner of this race himself, Graham Motion, uh, with the likes of Main Sequence and Better Talk Now. Morning line odds for bye bye Melvin of 15 to 1. Number 10. 10, Red Knight, Luis Saez. Michael Maker's Red Knight and Louis Saez at 20 to 1 morning line odds. A reminder in post position number 10. 13. 13. Highland Chief, Johnny Velasquez. Highland Chief, another for trainer Graham Motion, Johnny Velasquez aboard. Morning line odds of 15 to 1. Tough draw in 13 for Highland Chief. 8. 8. Masterpiece, Tyler Gaffleone. Eight, masterpiece for Michael McCarthy, Tyler Gaffleone aboard. One of the outsiders on the morning line odds at 20 to 1. Six. Six, channel maker, Jose Ortiz. Six is channel maker, another one of the outsiders in this race for trainer Bill Mott, Jose Ortiz on board. The morning line odds are 30 to 1. Install six, channel maker. And a 12. 12, Nautilus, Javier Castellano. And completing the lineup in stall 12, Nautilus, Paolo Lobo, uh, Javier Castellano, again, one of the outsiders at 30 to 1. 13 runners for the Longines Breeders' Cup turf. The Europeans will have high hopes in this one. Charlie Appleby with the top two, according to the morning line odds of Rebels Romance and Nations Pride, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, respectively. And uh, that's the field of 13 for the Longines Breeders' Cup turf. The finale of the World Championships, the one and a quarter mile, six million dollar Longines Breeders' Cup Classic has been filled with high drama right from the start. In 1984, Wild Again took home the inaugural running over Gate Dancer and slew a gold. In 1987, Ferdinand outdueled Ali Sheba in a battle of Derby winners. In 1993, it was Art Kong shocking the world at 133 to one. In 2009 at Santa Anita. Zenyatta was unbelievable, becoming the first female ever to win the Classic. At Keeneland in 2015, American Pharaoh captured racing's Grand Slam, winning the Classic after sweeping the Triple Crown races in the spring. Two years ago at Keeneland, Authentic showed he was the genuine article. And last year at Del Mar, Nick's go went wire to wire in a Horse of the Year performance. 
This is the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. Is this the race we were all waiting for? We finally got here. You can feel the excitement. You can feel the attention. And that's probably because Coach Calipari, men's head coach here for the UK Wildcats, has joined us to draw the pill. First and foremost, Coach, thank you so much for joining us. How special is it to see the horse racing and basketball worlds collide in your home arena, Rupp Arena? Well, I'm loving it. And I, I want to welcome everyone to Rupp Arena and to the great state of Kentucky. Um, the weekend of racing is going to be unbelievable. Keeneland is ready for it, and so is the city of Lexington. So thank you all for being here. Couldn't agree with you more. Now, before you jumped on board, Coach Cal, um, have you ever heard Rupp Arena be so quiet? Right? This no, we got to cheer every, every time I drop something. No, don't drop anything. They already told me. You heard it from Coach Cal. Feel free to show your excitement about your post position drop. This is race 11, the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. $6 million for these three-year-olds and upward. A mile and a quarter the distance. Eight have been entered. And how lucky are we to take a moment here? How lucky are we to be fans of racing, to witness greatness on display? But... Isn't that what the Breeders' Cup is all about? Bringing the best of the best from around the world to compete on racing's biggest stage. And the classic is racing's crown jewel. This year feels a little different, though, doesn't it? The emotion, the excitement, it is truly palpable. This is the Longines Breeders' Cup classic. Take it away. You ready, Coach? All right. Here we go. Do this. Number seven. No, 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 no. Turn it up. Four. Turn. It's all good. Don't drop it. Four. four. That's why I showed it to him. I need glasses up here. Post four. Four is flight line, Flavian Pratt. <laughs> all right. I think Team Flightline might be happy. We'll talk to them in just a bit. Yes. Flightline, your three to five morning line favorite for the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic for trainer John Sadler, Flavian Pratt. He has drawn comparisons to the great Secretariat and looking to further cement his place in history in what may be his final start. Hopefully not. We're going to do this together. That's a one, I think. Number one, okay. Taba, Mike Smith. Inside post for Taba, Hall of Famer Bob Baffert, Mike Smith teaming up here, and Baffert is seeking a record-extending fifth classic win, eight to one on Taba, drawing the rail. I can read that. It says six, spelled out. Six, epicenter, Joel six. Rosario. Post position six for Epicenter. Steve Asmussen, Joel Rosario teaming up here. Your Travers winner, second in two American Classics and leader of the three-year-old division. Five to one. Five. Number five, Hot Rod Charlie, Tyler Gaffalione. You know they were going to give a cheer regardless, right? Post position five for Hot Rod Charlie, Doug O'Neill, Tyler Gaffleone, a fan favorite and no doubt loves it here at Keeneland. Almost shocked the world two years ago, finishing second in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile at 94 to 1. Hot Rod Charlie, 15 to 1 on the morning line. Eight. Number eight, Rich Strike, Sonny Leone. All right, the Kentucky Derby winning team sounds happy. Rich Strike, post position eight for Eric Reed and Sonny Leone. He is a lot more than a one-hit wonder, right? He pulled the upset in the Kentucky Derby, a very valiant second last out, 20 to one. Three. Number three, happy saver, Johnny Velasquez. Post position three, four, happy saver. He's Mr. Consistency, isn't he? He's looking to get back to his winning ways after kicking off his career with five victories in a row. Hall of Famer Todd Pletcher, happy saver, 30 to 1. There you got it. There's seven. Seven. Number seven, Olympiad, Junior Alvarado. Post position seven for Olympiad for Bill Ma and Junior Alvarado. He got his long overdue grade one victory last night in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Ten to one on Olympiad, post seven. And two. 
Number two, Life is Good, Irad Ortiz. Life has been good for Life is Good. Supremely talented, draws post position two for Todd Fletcher, Irad Ortiz Jr. He has been the odds-on favorite and set the pace in all of 11 starts. Will that happen again come Saturday? We shall see. Six to one on Life is Good in post position two. So that is your field for the highly anticipated $6 million Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. I say this year in, year out. It is a true blessing to be here having starters in any of these races. So applaud all of yourself. Be very proud of that. Coach Cal, great job. Right? Thank you. Right, thank I am going to welcome in uh, Rishi back up here and jump into the audience to annoy a few of you, classic contenders. Flightline, John, coming for you. Yes, and while Brittany heads off to go and annoy people, just to remind everybody that uh, it is one of the great, not just one of the great racing events in the world, it is one of the great sporting events in the world, the Breeders' Cup Championship. And we are looking forward to so many wonderful clashes. And of course, uh, the headline act in the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic will be Flightline. And a lot of people are looking at it as maybe Flightline versus Life is Good, but I'm pretty certain there's some other very good horses in that lineup. Uh, and we hope to have a wonderful race uh, to close proceedings off. Brittany? Well, start with your morning line favorite, undefeated flight line, joined by trainer John Sadler. Before we get to the post position and your thought, what has the reception been since he's come to Kentucky? Uh, it's been great. I want to thank um, the people of Lexington, Keeneland, for putting on this event, Breeders' Cup. Everybody's been sensational. You know, it was a great thrill Saturday when he had his last workout, and you saw two or 3,000 th people out there in the dark to watch his last work. So it's been a great reception so far, and we're looking forward to this Saturday. Uh, we run out of superlatives to describe his performances. We drew the post positions today. Those are ever important. What did you make of your draw? Good draw. We would be happy with any draw. We think at a mile and a quarter, you have a good, um, good run into the turn to make you get your position. So for him, you know, it's just fine. Are you having fun? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, Rachel, I'll get it back up to you, and I'm going to make my way over to that side of the room to bother a few more people. Okay, are you going to sprint, or are you just going to do your I little... don't think that would be a good idea. I have heels on. No, those are try. some heels, so don't sprint. Mm -hmm. I struggle in those. Um, yeah, not only we said flight line against life is good, et al. in the uh, Breeders' Cup Classic, but there's some also cracking clashes on a personal level. I cannot wait to see the likes of Golden Pal take on the best of the, the European sprinters in uh, Highfield Princess uh, in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. Golden Pal, of course, trying to win at the Breeders' Cup for the third successive year, having won as a two-year-old, won last year, and trying to do it again this year. But it'll be a, a tough field for him. I think Highfield Princess might give him some race. But, Brittany, back to the classic? Yes, I have found, well, more than just the classic. Trainer Steve Asmussen, very busy at this year's Breeders' Cup, but we've become accustomed that, uh, to that as well. Uh, just as a whole, what do you make of these two days of racing that we're in store for? As exciting as it gets. You know, we love to have it here at Keeneland in the state of Kentucky. I think the number of entries show the how excited everybody is for it, and great group of horses doing extremely well. You know what it takes to win the Classic. What is it going to take? I see his eyes get big. What's it going to take for Epicenter to win? It, what a great running of the race. And as you mentioned, we've been fortunate in the Classic before. And it, it takes a Horse of the Year performance and uh, whoever's best on the day, obviously. Uh, Flightline being five for five going in there and coming off such a, a beautiful win in the Pacific Classic. We're all excited to see how we measure up. And is this year Jackie's Warriors year? Well, I, I, lo I love how you said that. You know, he's, his two defeats in the Breeders' Cup are hard to imagine being around him, and uh, he's coming into it just uh, absolutely beautiful. Love his draw for the race, and uh, would be wonderful for him to cap off his career with a Breeders' Cup victory. Final race? This is his final race, yes. All right. Well, best of luck with all of your runners. Lots to look forward to from the Hall of Famer on Friday and Saturday. Get it back up to you, and I think I'll bother Todd Fletcher last. Where'd he go? Okay. Whilst you find him. Um, one of the things that we've been fortunate to enjoy back in the UK this year is watching Baid race and wondering just where he stood in the, the pantheon of the, the greats. Unfortunately, his final run uh, came up short, but you guys still have the prospect. We all have the prospect of seeing what Flightline is truly capable of on Saturday. But you heard from uh, at least Steve Asperson and maybe one or two others. There are horses that might stand in his way, Brittany. 
Well, life is good. We say it a lot. Life has been great for life is good. Inside draw for him. Todd, what do you make of it? Uh, you know, we're happy with the draw. I don't think it was hugely important. Like John said earlier, you know, going a mile and a quarter is plenty of time to get position and kind of play things off the brick. For you, you have some really incredible contenders this year and a matchup I think everyone's really looking forward to seeing between Nest and Malathot in the Breeders' Cup distaff. How do you separate your two? I don't. I don't try to. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, we're blessed to have both of them. But, uh, you know, it's a contentious field. There's some other really good fillies in there. It's certainly not a match race between the stable mates. So uh, we're aware of that and really pleased to have both of them in the barn and, and they're both coming up to the race great. And you've walked over a lot of champions before, some really talented runners. What do you make of your group this year? Uh, we're blessed, yeah, it's a, it's a strong group. And, uh, you know, but we've been here before with what we felt like was a strong group and that doesn't always equate to win. So we're counting every day right to the right to post time. Good luck to you. Thank you. All right, and I see if I'm just gonna make my way really quick to team Rich Strike. Yep, kind of right behind you, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Trainer Eric Reed, uh, you brought some real fans to the sport in the Kentucky Derby with Rich Strike rolling up the rail at a big price. Can you do it again on Saturday in the Long Jean Breeders Cup Classic? Well, we're going to give it a try, but it's it's a real privilege to be here with all these guys in, in, in a race of this uh, stature. So we're real excited, and Rich is training great. How's the experience been as a whole? He has so many fans now, so what has it been like for you to be here in Kentucky with him again? It's been a dream come true. It's, it's been a wonderful ride, and hopefully it'll continue on through next year with us. And everyone happy with the post-position draw, yes? It's worked before from the outside. <laughs> that it has. <laughs> Not as far as you were in the Kentucky Derby, though. All right, Rishi, back to you. Brittany, thank you very much. What a great job Brittany Ed has done. How about a round of applause for her? Thank you so much to everyone who's put this together, all the team behind the scenes. Thank you to you for coming. What a well-behaved crowd as well. Uh, finally, just to say good luck to all the competitors on Friday and Saturday, human or equine. As I said, this is not just one of the great horse racing events in the world. It's one of the great sporting events in the world. We are privileged and proud to be a small part of it. Enjoy every moment of it. It could be an historic day on Saturday, so do not miss it. The Breeders' Cup, 14 races worth more than $30 million. It's going to be one hell of a weekend. Enjoy it, everyone. Established in 1982, Rood and Riddle Equine Hospital is a worldwide leader in equine health care, providing a full menu of specialties of services and treatment for all breeds and disciplines of horses, from the family companion to the high-performance athlete. Learn more today about Rood and Riddle Equine Hospital. Visit RoodandRiddle.com or call 888-773-4838. TVG's free handicapping tools are at your fingertips. Access expert picks, both found on the app and at TVG.com. Find selections in either the promotions header under the more tab or on the race page for select races. And follow your experts to get notified when new picks are available. Then use the bet ticket to play along. Check out TVG's expert picks, both on the app and at TVG.com. The NBA is back, and with FanDuel, this season's looking better than ever. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet and get up to $1,000 back in free bets if you don't win. Plus, all customers get three months of NBA League Pass with a $5 bet from America's number one sportsbook. That's right. Not only do you get a no-sweat first bet, you can also watch NBA League Pass on us. Make every moment more with FanDuel.
It's time to bet the race, and FanDuel Racing has entered the starting gate. Download the FanDuel Racing app, and you're off. It's super easy to use from the start. Make every moment more with tools to help you win on the inside. Watch out for great promos and easy deposits. And here comes fast payouts. It's super easy to use. It's fast payouts. It's super easy. There's no doubt about it. The best place to bet is FanDuel Racing. New customers bet the Breeders' Cup and get up to $100 back if your horse doesn't win. A little blue, they put it there. The Breeders' Cup World Championships have returned for a third time to Keeneland Racecourse. And here on FanDuel TV, you have been watching the post-position draw for all 14 championship races. That was at Rupp Arena. We're back at Keeneland Racecourse on site on our desk just off the winner's circle. I'm Todd Trupp. Very pleased to be with Christina Blacker. Time of Ray trying to warm up. Well, I know that kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> well, we had, we had 13 draws before the draw. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, it was every, everyone anticipating the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic. Christina, you said the importance amongst two of the main contenders was where flight line would draw in relationship to life is good. You said advantage if flight line was outside of life is good. Well, then I guess advantage flight line. Yeah, he gets that. So flight line drawing post position number four. Life is good post position number two. There was kind of an anxious moment where four there were only a few horses left. Well, yeah, there was that moment. <laughs> and then there was also the time when both the seven post and the two post were available and life is good's name hadn't been drawn yet. But I think they have to be very happy with the way this all shook out in the end as flight line, your four to five at morning line favorite drawn to the outside of life is good. Simon, you have uh, a considerable amount of wealth. We talk about that living in a gated community. Would you take everything you own and bet the <laughs> fact that life is good does not go off anywhere near six to one? Yeah, I mean, if I could, no one could pay me out. I got so much to put down that yeah, I couldn't, that's right. couldn't pay back. That, yeah. that to me was the most no, eyebrow-raising <laughs> moment. Life is good, I think we all know, is going to be the second choice. It's not going to be six to one, the third choice. No, absolutely not. And I, the, probably the thinking behind it is the mile and a quarter question mark, right? They probably think the morning line maker probably thinks that percent a better chance getting the mile and a quarter, but there's no way that life is good will go off as the third favorite. Yeah. I will give you all my money if that's the case. I will take all yeah. of your money. <laughs> uh, trying to take all the candy are the connections of Hot Rod Charlie in the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic and Scott Hazelton is with Bill Strauss right now. Bill Strauss with Team Hot Rod Charlie. They draw mid-pack at a smallish field in the Breeders' Cup Classic with Hot Rod Charlie. What do you make of this post-position draw for him? We really like the post-position draw. I mean, I wanted to be out the two, outside the two speed horses. Life is good and uh, flight line, and I think we're there. So it gives Tyler some time to see what goes on in the race. But this race is so impossibly difficult. Any one of the eight can win. It's going to be a hell of a race, and I'm just glad that we're in it, fortunate enough to be here today. When you reflect on the journey from a few years back at the age of two when he was a massive price to now knowing that he was that good, what has this journey been like with Hot Rod Charlie to get to this point? It's truly a once-in-a-lifetime journey for somebody like me. A, to have a horse compete at this level. And what a big horse does, it brings family together and friends together and everybody and takes us to Dubai and all over the country. It's an amazing, amazing experience. I couldn't have imagined how good it would be as much as I always dreamed of having a Kentucky Derby contender and a classic contender. It's been off the chart, something that you can't describe to people and you can't understand or expect it. But when you get there, it's quite a ride. How many lives has he impacted? Oh, dozens and dozens and dozens. And I mean, even in Dubai, when he won that prep race, the stands were standing up and cheering for him. Like, he's like the people's horse worldwide. In fact, I was a little disappointed by what John Sadler just said because I thought those two or three thousand people came out Saturday to watch Charlie train. They were there for flight line. So I learned something new today. Good luck this weekend. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to need a whole lot of it. Bill Strauss, as approachable of the high profile owner as you will ever find, he is truly one of us. And look, a lot of people do love Hot Rod Charlie out there. Realistically, though, does his best race match up with the others in here, the top contenders like Flightline? Not yet. I mean, unless he comes with something that we haven't seen from him yet, and unless the others somehow take a step backward, Hot Rod Charlie does need to get quite a bit faster if he's going to defeat the others, well, especially Flightline. Life's all about timing, right? I yeah. mean, you've got to be in the right place at the right time. And unfortunately, Hot Rod Charlie is in the, in the right place at the wrong time. And by that, I mean he's come up against two monsters in Life is Good and Flightline. Any given year, he's a horse that comes in with solid credentials. We get a weak year of an older handicap division. 
absolute major player. He's as consistent as they come. He shows up, but he's just got to run down two monsters, and I don't, I don't see that being a possibility. So the marquee matchup is set in the Longines Breeders' Cup Classic flight line. Life is good. And others, uh, the same is true in the Longines Breeders' Cup distaff, but the two main contenders here come from the same barn. Trainer Todd Fletcher sending out Nest. 9-5 to five as your morning line favorite stablemate Malathot draws the rail in here at 3-1. to one. I know it's a small field. Can you make too much of post position? What about the rail for Malathot? I'd, here's what I, from a trainer standpoint, I'd be just happy that Nest and Malathot aren't drawn next to each other. Because you have an instant at the gate, and if they're drawn next to each other, you're not wiping out one chance, maybe two. So I like the fact that they're drawn apart from, from top pledger standpoint and peace of mind. Inside post for Malathot, um, I, I don't know. 